Hello, I'm Tom DiMarco, and today we're going to talk about artificial intelligence in the classroom. All right, so artificial intelligence, or AI, as you see everywhere, and it's all over the place right now. Every product is talking about it has AI embedded, and certainly lots of companies are, are touting their skills with artificial intelligence. Okay, so AI is certainly everywhere. AI touches all of us. And AI is very hard to detect. So if you've got artificial intelligence out there, it's not always easy to understand. You don't really know if you're talking to a real person sometimes or you're talking to a robot. All right, so what is artificial intelligence? Well, some people think of it as 2001 Space Odyssey, where Hal takes over the, com uh, the rocket ship, the computer, and he basically wants to get rid of the humans. Or maybe we think of it as Arnold Schwarzenegger when he played the role of the Terminator, trying to save uh, the world from the robots. Or maybe a young Matthew Broderick that was able to trick the uh, computer system into not launching the, uh, the nuclear rockets and destroying the world, okay? We may think of artificial intelligence like that. Or perhaps, and this is actually occurring if you've got Netflix, uh, they're sending you predictions, what movies you would like, what movies you should watch based on previous predictions, a form of artificial intelligence. Or maybe think of uh, when uh, Watson, which was uh, IBM's supercomputer, was able to beat the, uh, the pants off everybody in, uh, in Jeopardy. Or, same again, Watson was able to beat Gary Karsapoff, the uh, uh, Grandmaster of Chess. Okay. Or, let's get the more down-to-earth kind of thing, Amazon is constantly sending me, and I'm sure you, product recommendations of things that we would probably like, and this is an example of artificial intelligence, okay? When you get in a plane, and the plane is out there, and it's flying on autopilot, it's gathering up uh, information, and it's making predictions of what to do based on that information, looking at its gauges and speeds and cameras and all that kind of stuff. Or you've got these self-driving cars that are out there now using their cameras and their radar and everything else associated with them, and they're uh, uh, driving down the road, okay? All forms of artificial intelligence, okay? Now, in around 2015, this is when there was a big breakthrough because all the stuff that I've just shown you is forms of artificial intelligence, but they're not really usable to you. I mean, you use them, but it's not like you can control them or use them in your day-to-day -day activities or life or job. Okay, but in 2015, artificial intelligence had a breakthrough, okay? And these are called large language models. Okay, and so basically think about uh, sending out a very powerful robot spiders, millions of them, billions of them, I don't know how many, and they pour over all digitized information. So they look through the Library of Congress, and they look through Wikipedia, and they look through the Internet, and they look through the Twitter feeds, and they look through the Facebook feeds, and they look through all this kind of stuff, and they gather up that huge amount of data. So now they have that big data here. So let's talk a little bit about what the breakthrough happened here, okay? So think of artificial intelligence previous to that is rules-based, okay? In other words, now this is not Watson, this is Big Blue, was a rules-based program that could go out and learn all the rules around chess, and then it's able to go and have a, a good game against the Grandmaster because it knows the rules here. But there's a game that's played in Asian countries called Go. And it is so complex that you can't learn all the rules. There's an infinite number of rules. I don't know. I never played the game. There's an infinite number of rules here. So imagine if you could use what they called neural braced. So you've got rules. Put all the rules in here. But in this case, they said, let's try something different. And this was Google. And so what Google did was it took Go and it said, watch the greatest Go players in the world and watch them and learn and then see if you can play a game of Go. And that's exactly what it did. 
And lo and behold, they were able to beat the really good Go players here because they were able to change from rules-based to what is called neural-based. So what does that mean? Well, computers don't understand words. They do understand numbers. So what you have to do is you have to assign a number to every single word that's out there. So imagine that. Here you got this you got you got this computer system and you got to assign a number to every single word that is out there. And when they assign a number to every single word that's out there, it's going to start to rank those words and it's going to start to connect those words. And so at a conference, now imagine this, here you are, the greatest AI scientists in the world are at this conference conference and Google introduces this and it shows this little thing here called King minus man plus woman and it asks the computer to solve that okay based on what it learned by looking at all the words that it could get hold of in the world and what does it come up with well it comes up with Queen Paris minus France what does it come up with Warsaw so this is an example of how Things have changed from rules-based to neuron-based. So they've got this huge interconnection of all these words that are ranked. And here's where it gets very, very interesting. We think in three dimensions, length, width, height, throw in time, perhaps four dimensions. That we can understand. Computer systems have now connected these words together in thousands of dimensions. And this is where it gets a little scary, too, because no one knows exactly on that inner layer how these connections are, are working. But they've got thousands of connections, okay? So here's what it kind of looks like, a large language model here. So you've got this inside piece right here. It's called vectors, and it is how everything is connected together. All right, so you got connections from the connections these large language models can make predictions. Okay, so when you see something like this, explain why a potato is like an apple. Well, yeah, it can go out there and it can say, well, they're both plant-based. You can eat both of them. They both got peels. Okay, you get the idea because it was able to connect things together. Okay, all right, so. They started to play around with this, and this was about 2017, 2018. They said, let's see how powerful these neuron-based large language models are here. So they started to give it tests. And here you can see, here's the very first test out there. And you can see, how did it do on the graduate test? How did it do on the AP statistics test? How did it do on the bar exam? And it didn't do great. I mean, a couple of them were up over 80%, but not all of them. Well, they went back to the drawing board, released a new version of, uh, of uh, the AI tools here. This is actually then became ChatGPT 4.0 or maybe 3.5, I'm not totally sure. And now look how they are scoring here. And you can see most of them are above 80%. It's pretty impressive. All right, so large language models that are out there. There's probably about 20 of them right now. Bard, ChatGPT, Quad, I think that's the Facebook one. And then there's the Copilot one. So here's what's interesting for those of you in education. Okay, so Copilot is out there. And uh, it's being embedded into uh, Microsoft's browser, which is Edge, I believe. But they're also putting it into, or they've already put it into, all its tools like Word and PowerPoint and Excel and so forth, okay? So even if you want to stop these kids from using these AI tools, I don't know how you're going to do it. So these are the large language models up here, and like I said, there's probably 20 of them out there right now. But there's other ones. There's audio, art, video, 
So you've got things like Dally E. Dally E is pretty clever. You can ask it to uh, to draw pictures for you. And I've played with it, and it does pretty fun stuff here. I asked it to uh, make a picture of Godzilla eating uh, a uh, a school, and uh, it did. It was uh, it was kind of crude, but uh, I've seen pictures a friend of mine has done with it, and they look really good. Okay, so you can have uh, video. Flicky is an example of the video. And uh, then, of course, you've got Boomy, which is an example of, of uh, audio. These are all examples, again, of, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence. Okay? All right. So what is artificial intelligence actually? Well, it's the ability to create content. And often you will see it called as generative AI. Generative AI, able to create a content, generate content here. And student peer review is a form of generative AI. And that's what you're going to uh, uh, learn about if you take a look at uh, student peer review. Thank you all for uh, listening.